Finally, let me really finish describing one of the big ideas of the course. I started with populations and percentage growth. Now that I know about separable equations, I can actually solve the percentage growth equation. Percentage growth says that the growth rate, the derivative, is a percentage c over 100 of the current value p. The more general form of this is just to write alpha instead of c over 100, where alpha is some constant. This is a separable equation. Like the last example in the previous video, the t part of this equation is just constant 1. So I take the p part over to the left as a reciprocal, 1 over p, and then I integrate both sides. The integral of 1 over p is logarithm of p. There should be an absolute value here in general, but since I know that the population must be positive, I'll drop the absolute value and only allow for positive values of p. Then the right becomes alpha t plus c. Then I take an exponential of both sides to get p on the left and e to the alpha t plus c on the right. By the laws of exponents, and changing the order of multiplication, I can write the right side as e to the c times e to the alpha t. If I put t equals 0 in, all that remains is e to the c, so this e to the c must be the initial population, which I'll just write as p naught. The solution is exponential growth, p equals p naught times e to the alpha t, where there is an initial population and a coefficient alpha that determines the growth rate. This is finally a proof of what I've been saying all along. Percentage growth is exponential growth. Writing this as a differential equation and actually solving that DE is the final connection. This is how a great deal of the practical applications of calculus work. Some rate of change is observed in the world, this gets translated into a differential equation. That differential equation is solved to get a function that describes the change, observe the percentage growth, write the DE, solve it, get exponential growth. Therefore, percentage growth is exponential growth. The percentage growth equation, dp over dt equals alpha p, is the starting point of population dynamics in mathematical biology. I'm not going to go too much further with this, but I want to give you just a hint of how this progresses from here. To make a more complicated or interesting model of a population, I can adjust the DE itself. That changes the rate of change, thus changing the growth behavior. The first and most common change to the percentage growth situation is adding a limitation to the growth a carrying capacity of an environment which will cause a population to level off. This is done by multiplying by 1 minus p over k, where k is this carrying capacity. When the population is not close to k, p over k is small, and this term is almost just multiplication by 1. So at the start, this is basically exponential growth. However, as p gets close to k, p over k is close to 1, so the term in brackets gets very small. This makes, makes the growth rate small, so the growth slows near the carrying capacity. The result is a horizontal asymptote. The growth will slow more and more, more approaching p equals k, leveling off. You could also have done a phase line with this differential equation, and you would see exactly the same behavior of the trajectories. I'm not going to solve this DE in this video. It is a separable equation, but a very long one with a couple of tricky algebraic techniques. The steps are in the notes if you wish to see them. The solution, however, is this function, which is called logistic growth. After exponential growth, it is the next most important model to study growth. You could check with asymptotic analysis that it has a horizontal asymptote at p equals k, exactly as the differential equation implied. I wanted to share this model to show you one of the ways that mathematical biology develops by adjusting the differential equations. But I also wanted to show you an example of how interconnected calculus really is. This is a DE, which I need a derivative to write down, and I needed an integral to solve it. I can use a phase line to analyze it, it has a horizontal asymptote, which is a limit I get using asymptotic analysis. Moreover, the limit and the horizontal asymptote exactly match the behavior predicted by the phase line. 
All these pieces of the course fit together in this one model as a way to describe a population that grows up to a limit of its environment and then levels off. And this, of course, is just the start. From this point, many more complicated and subtle population dynamics can be defined and analyzed. But all of them are based on the same ideas of derivatives, limits, integrals, and differential equations. They all tie together the major ideas and components of the course. And this is all pretty remarkable to me, and I hope it seems so to you as well.